My niece just got married last week and had the most beautiful flower arrangements on her tables. So I'm gonna help her preserve them and I'm inviting you to follow along as I share my tips and tricks. I've had these arrangements for a few days now, so they're not totally fresh. You can see there's a little bit of browning at the edges, but they're still really in good shape to do silica gel drying. You might be wondering what is silica gel? Well, it's a type of desiccant, which means that it's taking the moisture around it and absorbing it. In this case, it's gonna take that moisture out of our flowers and help us retain the best color and shape. So I have my container here. This container I only use for flower drying, as you can see. You don't want to use the same food containers for silica gel and food storage, so just make sure that you designate your container just for flower drying. I'm going to start by pouring some silica gel in the bottom of this dish. So once I have a layer that's about an inch to an inch and a half thick, I'm going to then place a few of the same types of flowers in here. I won't be able to fit a ton in here, but I'm gonna put a couple of roses and then we'll pour more silica gel on top. So as you can see, I cut it off right at the top of the stem here. And if you do want to have the stem on, what I recommend is threading some wire through the stem and through the base of the flower blossom, and you can always reattach it after you've dried the blossom. That way you save a little bit on space. One thing I wanna mention is I like to use gloves when working with silica gel and a mask. I find it helpful to have that safety gear on just because you don't wanna inhale some of these silica gel crystals. It's just like any other material. Take safety precautions that make you feel comfortable and always read the manufacturer's directions. Let's get one more rose in here. Once I have my roses placed, I'll pour more silica gel on top. And you don't need to worry too much about getting it inside because you can always use a fine brush to get those crystals out later. Once we have our container full of silica gel, we're going to seal it. And then I'm just going to wait a few days for this to dry before checking on it again. So I did wanna mention, I used one brand of silica gel for my first batch here, and then I just bought this other brand that comes in a bigger package. I'll link to both of these below. The one thing you wanna know about silica gel is that it has crystals that will turn a color once the gel has completely absorbed all of the moisture that it can. And then you can recharge it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But the first brand that we used had blue crystals that turn pink. This one has orange crystals and I'll show you what they turn into once we let our flowers dry. Just like we did before, I'm going to take some of my remaining flowers and add them to my container. You can see some of these have already started drying a bit, and that's okay if you've waited a little too long. It's nice to enjoy your flowers for a little while before you preserve them. And generally you want to preserve the same types of flowers in the same container, but I'll sometimes mix and match. You just want to check it every couple of days. Usually it may take three to five days to fully dry the flowers depending on the type of flower and how much moisture they have. So now I'm just gonna make sure I have nice support of the petals so that they don't droop and the flower can keep its shape as best as we can. But I'm gonna make sure that the silica gel gets into the petals so that we can get a nice preserved flower here. I'm going to go ahead and cover this and again, leave it for about three to five days, checking on it every so often. But I do wanna illustrate that this dish did not end up being deep enough and I wanted to illustrate that for you. So just keep in mind you want a nice deep container with a tight fitting lid. It's been a few days, so let's go ahead and check on how our flowers have dried. 
Here's a look at those peach flowers that we dried. I'm gonna put a little peek here at what it looked like before. You can see it's such a beautiful vintage kind of ombre look. So I'm really loving these results. Now remember how I mentioned a shallow dish is not ideal? You can see what happens. This flower got a little smushed and you can compare it to my other flower that I had in a deeper Tupperware. It preserved the shape much better, so just be aware of that. I also have a small paintbrush just dedicated to using silica gel. This helps to remove any of those little dust particles that get trapped inside the flower. I did want to also show you an example of air drying. I air dried these flowers in the bouquet and I think it actually came out pretty well also. So that's another option. Many of you have asked me how long dried flowers last. Well, I'll tell you, I've pressed and dried so many flowers over the years and they last a long time. However, I would expect the flowers to lose a bit of color over time. And the more you keep them away from direct sunlight and moisture, the better off you'll be. So I like to store my dried flowers in a container like this, which is pretty tightly sealed. And I keep it in one of my craft room closets. So it's always handy anytime I wanna do a craft with them. I do find that lighter color flowers tend to turn a little bit more yellow. So I get a lot of comments from readers saying, I dried these white flowers and they turned brown or yellow. That does tend to happen with lighter colored flowers as you can see here. So just know that going into it, my favorite type of flower to dry would be more of a blush color or blues and purples. Those really tend to retain their color the best. Red roses will tend to turn more into a deep wine color. So just be aware of that and experiment before you work with a wedding bouquet or something like that. Sometimes you just don't have a lot of time to dry flowers. I totally get that. So I wanted to give you one other option to use the microwave with silica gel. You'll start the same way by filling a microwave safe dish with silica gel and placing your flowers inside. Now, although this is a faster method, I still prefer to use the traditional method of placing silica gel in a sealed container because I feel like it takes less active time. However, this is a good option if you're in a pinch. I'm going to microwave my flowers uncovered with a glass of water. You'll want to start in one minute increments at half power. Then make sure you check it each time to see if the flowers need any readjusting. After about three rounds, I'm taking these roses out and just making some adjustments so they don't topple over. Ideally, I would have used a slightly larger container and completely covered these flowers with silica gel, but this did the job. You can see there is a lot of the silica powder inside, so you can use a fine brush again to dust that off. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with these results. It's a good option to have when you can't wait three to five days for your flowers to dry. One of the questions I get most often is, can you reuse silica gel? The answer is yes, absolutely. You can recharge your silica gel crystals in the oven. It's super simple, though it does take a little bit of time, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This was the Activa brand silica gel that had blue crystals. After drying our flowers, the crystals turned pink, so I know it's time to recharge them in the oven. I put it in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about five hours uncovered, and you can see the crystals are now recharged. They're blue and ready to dry again. With the Wise Dry brand of silica gel, there are orange crystals that turn green after they have fully absorbed the water. So you'll recharge these also in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And here's what it looks like once you're done after several hours. Let it cool just slightly before putting it back in an airtight container. Now that our flowers are dried, I want to put together a little shadow box for my niece to help her remember her wedding. So I have this nice shadow box that I picked up from Amazon. I'll link to this below. I will tell you, this is not what I started with. I actually had a shadow box that I had picked out before and I found out pretty quickly, it just wasn't deep enough. So make sure when you buy your shadow box that you measure it first or have your flowers already dried so that you can know that they're gonna fit. This shadow box came with some pins, so I'm gonna try using some of these to secure my flowers in place. The other option that some people use is just hot glue, so you can use that if you have it. It's just not my favorite for something as delicate as dried flowers, so what I'm gonna use instead is an acid-free glue if we do need to use something to secure our flowers. 
Um, I'll just get started with our largest rose here, this beautiful blush colored rose that we dried earlier. That's my biggest flower, so I'm gonna start with that in the middle, and then I'll place some other flowers around, and hopefully this will be full enough of dried flowers that I won't have to do a lot of gluing or pinning in place. I couldn't be more thrilled with how this turned out. My niece is gonna be so surprised to find her wedding flowers preserved like this. I'm sure you're up to something special too, so be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what that is. I'm gonna leave this video for you to watch next. It has even more ways to dry flowers and I'm sure you're gonna learn something new. So until next time, I hope you go out and make something beautiful.